Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today I have a, an amazing guest that I persuaded to come and talk to our viewers today because no one that I know of in the media has touched the subject at all. And I think I'm going to give credit to Asher Daniel, who is my guest today, and welcome to the show, Asher. Thank Glad you so that much. you were able to come because no one has approached this topic, and that is the American. And, and Asher is an American Pakistani Christian, and we're going to be talking about Christian persecution in the Middle East and in other countries as well. And I just want to um, read a, a little bit about what we're going to be talking about. And it's important to understand the social, historical, and political reasons why Christians are being persecuted. Understanding the more fully might be able to help us reduce persecution. We must do whatever we can to protect Christian brothers, our sisters, and not just in providing short-term relief, but helping them to build a global culture of religious freedom. And Asher, I really thank you again for coming on the show. I know, I know that uh, you were concerned about, you know, um, what this, you know, but, you know, this can, ha what could be, you know, on Facebook and all these things that people write, you know, the bully situation. And, um, but I am glad that you actually came on the show and we're going to be talking about uh, persecution of the Christian people. And, you know, I, before you came on and I had to do all this reading, you know, to prepare myself for this show, I had no clue whatsoever about uh, Christian persecution. You know, I'm sure, you know, I did my last show on anti-Israel as a new anti-Semitism. And, you know, because um, you hear about anti-Semitism in the news, but you don't hear very much about anti-Christians. And, you know, you think about the Christians and the Crusades and how powerful they, they were. And here I find out so much going on. Um, I believe it's 80% of Christians are being persecuted all around the world. So maybe we could talk a little bit about it. And some of the countries and that are really like the top ones that are the mm -hmm. most that are doing the worst on persecution of Christians. So you let me know a little bit first of all again thank you for coming on the show and tell, tell us a little bit why you came on the show um, to talk today well um, after initially uh, meeting you have a conversation earlier um, you know I just uh, it was one of those things where I felt like this was an opportunity for me to raise an awareness about what is going on with uh, Christians in, around the world because uh, you know, right now, as of lately, there's been so much in the news about anti-Semitism, and uh, you know that's great that there's an awareness about that, and people are trying to work towards making that not be so prevalent. But uh, you know, the other side of it, in other parts of the world, is is about all the Christians that are suffering on a daily basis that no one ever hears about. I was shocked when number one, the number one country. Uh, well, maybe now I'm not being shocked. North right. Korea, you know, with uh, you know, with uh, Kim Jong Un, mm -hmm. Jong Un, Moon, yeah. uh, but North Korea is one of the biggest mm -hmm. abusers of Christianity. Yes, they are. Why? Why are they abusing? Why are these countries abusing? The, the main 
reason I feel that these countries are abusing Christians is number one, they they hate freedom. They hate that um, they, that we're not under their control, basically. That we're not going to follow what they say because we have someone in our lives that we are more dedicated to than even our own lives who are committed to Jesus Christ. And they can't stand that, that we have peace, that we have happiness, that we are good. Like, like I, I said, that you know, people that live in the darkness hate the light. I think that's one of the main reasons right there, except for extreme, uh, you know, extremism. Yeah, you know, it, in China, we had um, one of my other shows was um, uh, in China that they were persecuting the Falun Gong or Gong or Zhong. It depends on where you, where um, the, the correct pronunciation. And we had a young man and his wife. The man came on the show and talked about the nine and a half years that he and his wife were in prison just because they were practicing. It was, it was, it was a yoga type thing. Mm -hmm. And they saw it as a religious point of view. And I, I have seen it practiced. And to me, it's just another type of yoga. And they're being persecuted. And here, Christianity, I mean, this is the basis of um, the United States was it started, England started on Christianity. Uh, Judaism, Christianity, and you know, we, we followed the, the Crusades. Remember, the Crusades were the Christians were the abusers right. in in what you know that era of time, mm -hmm. and now they're being abused. Well, you know what happened at those times. I, I know that uh, throughout history, Christians, you know, the tables turn and say, "Oh, well, look at Christians did before." But I assure you that whatever was done during the cur the Crusades or the, even the Salem witch trials, those are atrocities. Those are not, you know, there's, there's nowhere in the Bible where you find support that anyone should do those kinds of things. Those people did those things for their own political and personal agenda. And, and you know, um, what form, do you tell a little bit about the different forms that it exists in? What, what is happening? When we talk about, is it just verbal abuse? Is it, what, what kind of beatings? What, what, what are we talking about? You know, it's, uh, it's really sad. Um, you know, ev everything from... Just verbal abuse walking down the street, I mean, to physical beatings, to kidnapping, to rape, to forced marriages, to, to slavery. I mean, there's just all of this going on there all the time. Every single day they have to deal with this. I mean, to the point where, I mean, even children going to school have to deal with being abused every single day because their name. People know, oh, okay, well, that's a Christian name. Okay, this person's a Christian. Okay, let's get a rise out of him. Well, what, what do they want practice? What is the religion that they want people to, you know, we're talking about in uh, different, I, I have a list of different countries mm -hmm. that North Korea, Somalia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sudan, what are the religions, what is the religious groups that they want them to practice? If it isn't Christianity, what are some of the religions that they want them to practice or not practice? Well, I mean, I really can't speak for North Korea. Um, I think they're more, what, communist? Yeah. That's part of why. But uh, the other countries that you named are primarily Islamic countries. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I would like to also state that, um, you know, what we're talking about are not the majority of Islamic people that live in this country, that live around the world, that are very peaceful, loving people that are an asset to our society. I'm not talking about those people at all. We're talking about the minority that follow some of the teachings in the Quran that promote violence. And the Christians are being persecuted because because they believe in Christ. Is that what it is? Yes. And they feel that that's not their God. And the Muslims, they want them to believe in uh, in Muhammad or in well, initially everyone that does not believe the way that they believe is an infidel. So either they are to be convert or killed. You you mentioned something we were at, eating at the bluegrass today, uh, and uh, which was great food, was. and and um, we we were talking. You were talking to me about a young woman that her father put that he was upset because yeah. she's practicing yeah. Christianity? This was a young girl in Uganda. How old was she about? Uh, you know, I, I sorry, I, I don't, I think she was the, maybe 9 to 12 years old or something. She was very young. A young though. girl, very so young. it wasn't a teenage no, girl, no, it was a young girl. No, very young say girl. she was around 12 or so. So somebody came to their village and told them about somebody named Jesus Christ. She heard the story about Jesus and what he did, 
and she gave her life to him, basically. So when she went home, she told her father, and he was furious. And he said, well, if you don't stop believing in Jesus, I'm going to kill you and your brother. So she didn't stop going to church. One day he, she came home. Her father had locked her away in a room and said, set her on this mat and said, if you move from this mat, then you're denouncing Jesus Christ. If you believe he's your real Lord and Savior, you won't move from this mat. He locked her in the room and he didn't return for three months. Oh my God. And the only way, she, how did she make, eat or drink? Or? Well, um, what happened is that her brother dug a hole under the door and he would pour water like, right in there in the, the hole in the dirt and she would lap it up like a dog. Oh, God. And uh, sometimes he'd take some fried bananas and, and shove them under the door, little pieces of bread, and try to feed her like that. When they, when they, uh, the neighbors actually started to say, where, you know, where is she? Where is Susan? Mm -hmm. And that's when the boy said, this is where she is. And they called the police. When they found her, she was emaciated. She was barely like 20 kilos. Oh my God. So did the parents, did they jail them or anything or put them in prison or what was the, well, what happened? Unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the father. Mm -hmm. I just know the story about what happened with Susan and how she was rescued. And uh, you know, the, the sad thing is that uh, her bones had actually started conforming to the way that she had been sitting on the mat. Oh my. And so she, is she alive still? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, she, she is she's, alive yes, today. Alive. And just because she was a, a young girl practicing mm -hmm. uh, the religion mm -hmm. that wasn't her father's exactly. religion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of the, this prejudice going on all over the world. And we're not, I'm just wondering why the media hasn't really gone into this or talked about it. I mean, we're listening night and day about uh, the Pledge of Allegiance mm -hmm. or the. Um, you know, not singing the Star of a Single Banner or mm -hmm. what have you, and, um, and all what's going on in the United States, but what's going on in the rest of the world, we're really not hearing about mm -hmm. this. And this is probably one of the reasons you came on the show today, to make people and our viewers aware of what's going on with Christianity. I hope so. And it's really, really, and, you know, so it's really pretty hard to swallow. I mean, um, and so the, the reason Christianity per persecution occurs because uh, 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 in other countries is because they want them to believe in what they want them to mm -hmm. believe in. And where, where do you see this going in the future? What do, what do you think, can, what can, can anybody help? What, what can we do to help this and to make it known what's going on and how do we get this across? Well, um, where I foresee it going, I mean, I, I would love to bring all these people out of wherever they live and put them somewhere safe where they don't have to live in oppression. Unfortunately, that's not the way the world works. Um, but there are organizations out there that are going and, and helping victims of persecution and helping them rebuild the churches that have been burned down, rebuild their homes, helping them with shelter, food, um, education, job training you know, a, a lot of things out there. So they're trying to make a better situation for them in the world they live in right now. How do they get in there with uh, all the other, you know, groups around them, you know, that, that don't, uh, how, do, how do they help these people? They're kind of going into a territory mm -hmm. that's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Well, just like any, you know, you, you look at Doctors Without Borders, you know, and they go into third world countries where they might be getting shot at, some things might be happening to them, but they look at the big picture, they look at what is more important to them. You know, so these people that go out there, these organizations that work with these people, they are fully aware that their life may be lost in this process. Now, your family is Christian, yes. correct? And what was, how did, um, and your, are you, your parents were born in Pakistan, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. You were born? In Pakistan. And you came here, how old were you? I was you? very young, about a year and a half old. Okay. And, um, but they were, they were there and, um, how did they, how, how did, were they treated being Christian? Uh, I heard about this almost every single day from my father, about all the things that he had to go through, about how he wasn't able to ever get ahead at work because he was Christian, how he was discriminated against because he was Christian. I have cousins that can attest to how they were treated, bullied, and um, it's just, that's one of the reasons why they wanted to leave Pakistan so that we can come to a place where we have freedom to practice whatever religion we want. That's one of the reasons I am the patriot that I am, because I 
really respect the religious freedoms that we're given in this country that I don't have anywhere else. Now, you come across, I'm sure, Pakistani Muslims, mm -hmm. right, here in the United States. Mm -hmm. how, are, how do they feel about Christianity? Is there, being that they're Muslim in the United States rather than in Pakistan, what are their feelings about? Uh, have you been able to form any friendships with any Pakistani Muslims? Um, I have, you know, and honestly, we, we never talk about religion. Th those people were not part of the minority that believe in extremism. Those are part of, you know, just, uh, just really good people. Uh, honesty, some of the most giving, caring people. So, I mean, uh, you know, over here, I haven't come across any religious persecution, you know, by any Islamic people. But on Facebook is another thing. Tell me about Facebook. Um, well. I, I don't understand why people feel the need to openly mock somebody else's religion in a way that is just so so hard to swallow that sometimes you have to say something you know but the moment you say something then almost instantly you get all these bullying comments from other people that say that you're small-minded you're backwards you live in a fairy tale well if I'm small-minded and backwards and I believe in a fairy tale why don't you leave me and my fairy tale people alone don't don't have to say anything negative we're not bothering anyone else. True believers in Christ, they don't try to bother anyone else. They want to help people. So they're doing that to bully you, mm -hmm. to bring out, you know, um, so they can pick an argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, you know, it happens, you know, it, it happens in uh, different faiths. And I think we were talking about earlier that some, um, that somebody that, uh, that used to be very close to me, and when she started putting um, on Facebook, um, uh, it was a very offensive to me because they were putting our president in a Nazi uniform doing the Nazi salute. Mm -hmm. And for Jewish people, you know, they, they thought it was, uh, they didn't realize how people that are in, from the Jewish faith, it's very, um, it's, it's very traumatic to look at your president in a Nazi uniform saluting and you know during what happened during mm -hmm. the Holocaust mm -hmm. and everything it's very very offensive and people that aren't Jewish and people that are doing this it, it's also we feel being bullied the same way you know I've heard some really negative anti-semitic comments and I believe that all of this it, almost all of it is stemmed from lack of knowledge I mean some people they talk oh why doesn't uh, Palestine just uh, kick all the Jews out you know, I'm like, well, how could you say that? You know, uh, it, they're people too, and they, they belong there just as much as anyone else. And, and it's just, it's just so sad that I think this generation is so much more into their own personal lives and their agenda about who the next person they're going to meet and what they're going to put on social media. They have no background information about any of these religions or any the persecutions they've been through, like the terrible things that happened in the in the camps in Auschwitz. I mean, so many books and material that can help you relate and understand and these these people growing up they're in this digital age they're tied to their phone they don't they don't see these things because it's not what Kim Kardashian did or what whoever football player didn't stand up or whatever happened you know so that's part of why this uh, generation is just being fed garbage mm -hmm. yes and it, it's very it's very sad because um, I, I really relate to what your father went through because my father went through here in the United States very similar that he was Jewish and Jewish people years ago didn't work for you know uh, big companies but corporations they started working for themselves like they were tailors mm -hmm. and they were um, even they went into law they they were doctors and they were um, you know they they worked with their hands and uh, they opened up businesses, and my father happened to work for a corporation, and he couldn't tell them that he was Jewish because he would have lost his job. And, 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 and it happened because of that. I didn't know, uh, I didn't find out that I was Jewish until I was maybe about 10 years old, 11 years old, because my father uh, was in charge of the holiday parties, mm -hmm at the corporation, and if they had found out, he would have lost his job. And this is the United States, mm -hmm. and this was not, I mean, we're talking about in the 40s, 
you know, in the 40s, this was what's going on. You, if you were Jewish, you couldn't, a lot of people wouldn't rent to you, and they're, you know, you couldn't move into certain areas, certain neighborhoods like we have today, you know, like Kenilworth, Winnetka, some of those areas would not sell to Jewish people. And um, it, 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 it's a very, very traumatizing. And when you, you told me this and all that which you had to go through, our people had to go through very similar. And here it's the United States. We're not talking about, you know, countries of the Middle East or North Korea. I mean, this actually happened in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, not too long ago, um, I think it was it seven years ago or so, I was working at uh, a customer service sales job and uh, my manager boss, she was basically always sat next to me, her desk was next to mine. Um, you know, people would always come in and for some reason not start up conversations about Jesus, talk about it somehow. Um, maybe because I was praying for it, but, um, <laughs> but also because um, I think it was the way I was living my life and I was just trying to reflect that piece and people would be like, hey, what does he have? Why does he have that? What's so important about that? And they would talk to me about it. And my boss didn't like that at all. After a little while, I did lose that job. And that was mainly the reason. And when, one of the things she said to me when I, when I was leaving was, hey, you know, some advice for your next job. I'm like, what? Try not to be so religious. I was doing my job. I was doing a good job. I, I wasn't hurting anyone. People were talking to me. I didn't seek up people to ask them, hey, what do you believe in? Let me talk to you about Jesus. It wasn't like that at all. But, you know, there's, it's prevalent in so many forms. And here it's the United States mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. and that you lost your job because you oh, were yeah. talking about Jesus or Christianity, yeah. but you, it wasn't on your, you know, it was during a break or oh, yeah. whatever. It wasn't during your job. And people, why do people find it very offensive, to, you know, about their religion? If you want to talk about your religion, why do people feel, they, they feel threatened by it for mm -hmm. some reason? Why do you think so? I really believe that people feel threatened by Christianity is because they can't come to terms with their own sin. Their what? Their own sin. They can't come, come to terms with it. Either they have no moral compass or they feel guilty inside, but they want to continue living the way that they want to live and they don't want to live the way that in their heart of hearts they know is the right way to live. And what are, what are the Christians here doing about uh, the persecution that's going on in all these different countries, and I have a list of many countries that mm -hmm. um, that you know that are, that it was kind of it, that I was kind of surprised. Well, one of the that best resources right there that you're looking at is the uh, OpenDoorsUSA.org. Okay. Uh, one of the things that they've created is a World Watch monitor. Also, in that uh, illustration you're looking at right there, that shows all the countries, mm -hmm. over 50 countries right now, and they're rated in level of their persecution. Right. And uh, you know, they're they're a great resource. They they do a lot for people. There's OpenDoorsUSA.org. There's the Barnabas Fund. There's uh, Dover International. Uh, Knights of Columbus even have something where they are providing relief for Christian refugees. I mean, we got North Korea, we got Somalia, we got Afghanistan, and Afghanistan, we're trying to, you know, they, you're trying to help the leader there. Mm -hmm. We just sent in troops. Uh, of course, Pakistan, Sudan, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Yemen, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, Iran. I mean, some of these countries, you, you, I could see why. You see the common tie. Yeah, I could see this <laughs> common tie. But uh, certain ones that um, that are trying to get American relief and everything else, we shouldn't be able to mm -hmm. pay. I don't think that the United States should be paying any of these countries that persecute any religion. Right. And that, I think maybe that should start there. Yeah, it should. And um, you know, we, we support them. We give them millions of dollars. We're even sending our troops there. And, you know, I think that should be, um, if you want our money, if you want our troops, mm -hmm. if you want our help, you cannot persecute people the way you're doing. You know, uh, Christians are primarily the targets, but, you know, in these countries where they have uh, Islamic extremism, 
I mean, Hindus and, and, and Sikh people, you know, alike, you know, Buddhists and, you know, Jews are all persecuted the same way. Yeah, I heard Buddhists are getting, oh, yeah. and they're, they're a peace-loving, mm -hmm. I mean, they always, all they want is peace, mm -hmm. you know, the Buddhists. It's a, it's a very, you know, for people that have any kind of turmoil in their life, if they, you know, they go to the Buddhists and they, you know, for just comfort and peace. They want peace. People go to religion because they want moral compass and they want peace. They want to seek their God the way that they want to and they don't want to be bothered. You know, I was looking at uh, one of the papers that I have that I have to, uh, they're, they're teaching this in mm -hmm. the schools actually, mm -hmm. they are. Um, which is really, um, I was really shocked when I read about some of these schools are being, uh, um, that they're actually teaching small children. Have you seen the videos? Yeah, education system, <laughs> here it is. I should mark this. Public school textbooks used by all children often have a strong Islamic orientation. Public schools and madrasa teachers had limited awareness and understanding of religious minorities and their beliefs and were divided on whether religious minorities were citizens. Now these are the teachers that are expressing their, their uh, you know, negative views about Christians and Jews and successfully are transmitting their biases to students. What do you, what do you, how can this be uh, addressed? If, you're, if your small children, little kids, are getting indoctrinate, doctor, their doctoration mm -hmm. in very young age. And that's all they're gonna believe, unfortunately. And uh, it's, it's really sad, and it goes back to, you know, children, you know, having the education about you know what is going on I mean a lot of people don't even know what's going on in their own religion a lot of these people that are you know in, in Islamic people like uh, you know you no, know, a lot of them are very knowledgeable I'm not saying that they're not but the way that they work is that you know the mosque is the cleric you know he recites the Quran they have to memorize the Quran to get to that point where they can be the leader of their mosque right so everyone that goes in there just listens to the word but like a lot of people in a lot of religions they don't actually ever open the book themselves and read and be and question it. No, they don't question. They say this is the way things are. This is the way we're taught. This is our culture. This is ingrained in our culture. So that's why they want to keep out any other areas where anyone could question them or think a different way. Well, we, we have two minutes to really solve the problems here, <laughs> and um, I think that possibly one of the ways to solve is to get to the children, talk to the children. Mm -hmm. How can that be done if the, you know, in the, if the school system is teaching one way, how can you indoctrinate kids, you know, at an early age? What can, you know, to show there are other religions, and it's okay if you don't believe in them, fine, but, you know, but they're a religion in itself, and this is part of, we should share, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. they're, you know, we don't have to believe in what right. they believe. Right, nobody least, should have to suffer like that. No, yes, to be to be abused, to be hurt, to be punished, mm -hmm. like the little girl that had to sit on a mat for, th uh, what was it, three, three months? months? Mm -hmm. And she, thank God she's alive, I don't even, but how, you know, how to reach the younger generation before they become, you know, the same type of person? Well, of, honestly, um, I wish that the media would show more about what's going on in the world. I can't necessarily change the media, but uh, what we can do as people is we can become more aware of what's going on in the world and do some research you know ourselves and uh, th these uh, groups that are out there helping I mean it's just a drop in a bucket honestly because there's so much going on there's only so many people they can get to and there's people around the world that desperately need help and they, they need all of us to be aware of what's going on so we can do our part to help them because all lives matter it's not religious or color or anything mm -hmm. all lives matter right it's just not, you know, black lives matter or white lives matter, but all lives matter. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what we need to convey to the world because look what's happening. I mean, um, years ago, religion divided us and we thought we grew up from that and we're having the same problems mm -hmm. all over again. And it's becoming very intense. Um, and for, you know, for young Jewish pe kids that are in, in that we did last last month, uh, they're getting threatened in uh, their colleges. I mean, it's, it's all over and, mm -hmm. and it needs to be addressed. It needs to be, we need to have harmony. And I really want to thank you, Asher, 
for being on the show, to speaking out for your people. Thank you. Thank you so thank much you for the opportunity. For, thank you, and we're going to we we'll put this on YouTube, and we're, we hope all our viewers out there can tune in and really understand what's really happening, in, you know, for Christians and and to speak up for the Christian people, and so there's no more abuse, and we could do something for them. Again, I want to thank, thank you, you for being here, and um, and and you were. I'm, I'm glad you came out to the show today because thank you again.